Believe it or not, many Arab countries in the Middle East have betrayed the Palestinian struggle. The fact is, several Arab nations have normalized relations with Israel, whether secretly or openly. As we all know, the Palestinians are their brothers, not the Israelis. So how did all this happen? Indeed, on various streets in Arab countries, people continue to demonstrate against Israel's actions towards Palestine. Their protests are not only directed at Israel, but also at its biggest ally, the United States. Their hatred for Israel is undeniably strong, even though they might not realize that their leaders have already established relations with Israel. Their actions are certainly driven by the bonds of brotherhood among fellow Muslims. However, this is not the case with their leaders. These leaders do not see Israel as a war criminal or a perpetrator of genocide in this era. In fact, the leaders of Arab countries view Israel as a bridge to elevate their nations to greater global prominence. Don't believe it? Let's discuss it further. Initially, in 1948, Arab countries did not accept Israel's existence in the Middle East at all. In that year, the Arab nations united to expel Israel from Palestinian territories. It is important to note that Egypt led this war effort. However, who would have thought that Egypt would become the first country to betray Palestine during that period? The reason was that at the time, Egypt was experiencing an economic crisis that left the country in turmoil. Knowing this, Israel and America collaborated to entice Egyptian President Anwar Sadat to abandon the coalition of Arab nations. They offered aid to help Egypt escape its economic crisis. Additionally, Egypt was promised control over the Sinai Peninsula to manage the Suez Canal, which is one of the world's most crucial trade routes. However, in return, Egypt had to normalize relations with Israel by signing the Camp David Peace Accords. By signing this, Israel and Egypt officially made peace in 1978. As part of the peace agreement, Egypt even sent its ambassador to Tel Aviv. The consequence, however, was that Egypt was expelled from the Arab League for many years. To the United States, Mr. Simcha Dinitz, the Camp David peace accords between Israel and Egypt had a significant impact on the normalization process between Arab countries and Israel. This peace agreement served as the initial gateway for establishing diplomatic relations between Arab nations and the West, not just Israel. However, most Arab countries were still hesitant to sign peace agreements with Israel as Egypt had done. When the Palestinian Liberation Organization recognized Israel's existence in the Oslo Accords, various Arab nations finally felt that it was the right time to establish diplomatic relations with Israel. Specifically, Jordan began diplomatic relations with Israel following the Oslo Accords. Their objective was to foster economic ties with Israel and gain support from the United States. Today, both Egypt and Jordan utilize their diplomatic relationships to obtain natural gas from Israel. Jordan, in particular, heavily relies on water imports from Israel. Similarly, the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain established diplomatic relations with Israel through the Abraham Accords. Following this, Sudan and Morocco also joined the Arab-Israeli normalization process in 2021. It has even been discovered that Saudi Arabia has been secretly engaging in diplomatic relations with Israel. The question remains, why are these Arab countries so eager to establish diplomatic ties with Israel and betray Palestine? After all, these same Arab nations once waged war against Israel. All of this is, of course, for the benefit of their respective countries. For example, Egypt, 
by establishing diplomatic relations, saw Israel as a bridge to gain American assistance to overcome its economic crisis in the past. Meanwhile, Jordan needs gas and water from Israel. This country also received permission to purchase military weaponry from the United States thanks to the Arab-Israeli normalization. Likewise, Sudan normalized relations with Israel to cooperate in the agricultural sector as they desperately need Israel's agricultural technology. Morocco's case is different. It does not actually need Israel for normalization. This country primarily seeks American support to realize its annexation of Western Sahara. As a result, Morocco could eventually gain control over the Western Sahara territory. But what about Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, and Saudi Arabia? Do they also have their own interests in the Arab-Israeli normalization efforts in the Middle East? In accordance with the vision, outlined by His Majesty King Mohammed VI and he Clearly they do. Wealthy countries like Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates would not engage in relations with Israel without specific goals. It is evident that these three countries established relations with Israel primarily to gain protection from the United States. The question is, why do Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Sudan need protection from the United States? And from whom are they seeking protection? They all need military assistance from the United States to safeguard themselves in case of an attack by Iran. Amidst the tensions in the Middle East, Iran's presence poses a significant threat to countries like Saudi Arabia and others. Moreover, the startling fact is that Iran continues to develop its nuclear weapons program. Furthermore, Iran funds militant groups across the Middle East, which can threaten the security of these countries. By normalizing relations with Israel, these countries have a way to strengthen their military capabilities with weapons from the West, particularly from the United States. Additionally, major oil-producing countries like the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia can export their oil and gas to the West. In other words, Arab-Israeli normalization provides security for these countries and can significantly boost their economies. Saudi Arabia, understanding its key role in normalizing Israel in Arab countries, has made strategic demands. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman seeks binding defense commitments from the United States, access to advanced technology, and a civilian nuclear energy program in exchange for Arab-Israeli normalization. Despite these negotiations, Saudi Arabia remains considerate of the Palestinian cause, ensuring that any agreement still aims towards the establishment of a Palestinian state or the two-state solution. Unfortunately, on October 7, 2023, the Hamas group initiated a war against Israel, causing the peace agreement between Israel and Saudi Arabia to be postponed. Israel has since launched full-scale attacks on Gaza without restraint. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu has stated that Israel will never agree to the two-state solution, even if such a request comes from its ally, the United States. Despite this, Saudi Arabia and other Arab countries that have established diplomatic relations with Israel are secretly supporting or even defending the Zionist state. This was evident when Iran launched a retaliatory attack on Israel using 300 drones and missiles. Israel did not panic much because it received assistance from Arab countries. Reports indicate that Jordan, the United Arab Emirates, and Saudi Arabia helped Israel thwart Iran's counterattack. Even countries like Bahrain, Qatar, and Iraq were involved due to the presence of American troops using their bases. This situation is highly ironic because on one hand, Arab countries condemn Israel's invasion of Palestine, but on the other hand, they support it. 
This contradiction is mainly because they desperately need American strength to survive in the Middle East. Thus, it can be concluded that Arab-Israeli normalization is primarily driven by economic and security concerns. But the question remains, will Arab-Israeli normalization fully continue? Some analysts say this seems unlikely. However, those who have already established diplomatic relations with Israel find it difficult not to be involved in this conflict.